Well, hello, everybody. After recently watching Andrew Neil doing a very short interview with a shadow Labour minister, and Labour, by the way, for those who don't know from overseas, is a party that's likely to be our next government in a couple of years. They're leading in the polls by a mile at the moment. And so their green energy policies really concern me because they're so silly. But here, Andrew Neil is asking a very simple question. So I'm going to first play this short interview and then intervene at points to make my points about the stupidity of the lack of response by the Labour minister. One of these missions is to generate all of our electricity by 2030 with zero carbon <coughs> emissions. Mm -hmm. That was one of the missions. Now, yesterday, at this time, 51% of all of our electricity needs were generated by gas. This is the energy dashboard that was available actually at the moment I was making this video, a few days after that interview. And if you look at the green amount here, that is the wind, the blue is the gas. And as you can see, in this particular case, the wind died to very, very little as we came down to here. This is typical. But at times we've gone nine days without any wind, with a shortage of 7,200 gigawatt hours. And the only way you can make up for this is with fast reacting gas. Even nuclear can't cope. So even if we increase nuclear, it's not fast enough to react to replace the gas quickly. And of course, there's a huge cost to this. It doesn't actually save CO2. And there are now new studies, scientific studies, that show there is no saving of CO2 by going for wind or solar. 51% of all of our electricity needs were generated by gas. You seriously expect us to believe that you'll get that down to zero within five years? Well, that's our ambition. If, if you're going to be net zero, what will happen when the wind isn't blowing and the sun isn't shining? We can do Where so will the electricity come from? We can do so much more with renewables in this country, with wind, with solar. It doesn't matter time. how much wind you have if the wind isn't blowing. I'm baffled by how you think we can get to a net zero electricity system by 2030 that won't involve gas. But we're going to be investing in the industries of the future. We're going to be investing in renewables. We're going to be investing uh, in tidal. No matter how much wind or solar you have, we will still need gas as a balancing item when the wind isn't blowing. What will you do? People can judge us after five years. We're talking about where we may be after the four or five years of a Labour government. <laughs> I can answer that question in four or five years be up the creek without a paddle basically we wouldn't have we would have massive blackouts massive problems because they're simply not facing the simple reality of what do you do when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine now i've gone into this in some detail in a video link i'm going to give below this video it's it's basically no one is doing the simple maths and to give you an example of how absurd this is if you're going to try and store this energy somehow for the nine days example i took and that's not the worst case for the nine days example i took in the video i've linked to below it's about 7200 gigawatt hours of energy i needed to make it up to norwick the pump storage scheme i was involved with in north wales the biggest at the time in europe you know can supply you know, a tiny amount, just over one, just over one, 1.1, 1.2 gigawatt hours. We need 7,200. The new planned pump storage scheme costing billions in Scotland can manage to give us um, maybe 1.6 gigawatt hours. We're looking for 7,200. Let me tell you now, uh, as an engineer, there is no way there is no way we can store the energy. It is not viable. Batteries would cost an enormous amount. The biggest battery in the world is just 1.6 gigawatt hours and it costs tens of millions of dollars. It is not viable. In fact, the battery capacity that would be needed, besides costing the entire turnover of Europe, would actually exhaust the world of its resources. We are heading into total chaos and madness. And people have to realise this. Now, our current government, the Conservatives, are really, really bad. They have terrible green energy policies. They, they just blast through without any understanding, no understanding at all of what they're dealing with. But in actual fact, Labour are actually worse than that. It is unbelievable.
So please watch the video in the link below and begin to understand the nature of the problem that nobody is doing the maths here. I simply couldn't get over this refusal to answer a simple question. Somehow the magic energy tree is going to come down and deal with it. I was also involved in the very early stages of the possibility of tidal power in, in the Seven Estuary back in the 70s. And I can tell you that's not viable either. Nor was the Swansea Barrage viable. I, I can go into any amount of detail you like on these things. They're just not realistic. We are being led by idiots.